now. Good Monday evening. September is Suicide Prevention Month. One of the groups most at risk for suicide includes our military members and veterans. They face several potential triggers lately, from the chaos in Afghanistan to the anniversary of 9-11 to the continued isolation because of COVID-19. Ray Danielle talked to two vets who are sharing their own stories to help give others some hope. Jason Rudolph only has a few souvenirs from his time in the Army. This one is 2nd Infantry Division when I was stationed in Korea. Most of the memories remain only in his mind. We go back to the worst spot in our lives, and that's, it's just like a continuous loop in our heads. Rudolph says that's what it's like to have post-traumatic stress disorder. It's an injury that you can't see. An injury that almost cost him his life. I went in dark places, um, not wanting to live, and I almost committed suicide. In the past 20 years, more than 30,000 active duty military members and veterans have died by suicide. That's nearly four times the amount who have died in combat. Rudolph did not become a part of that statistic, thanks in part to one man. Daniel basically dropped everything and came and saw me and talked to me. Without him, I mean... I don't know if I'd be here right now. After battling his own mental health challenges. I was actually medically discharged from the Marine Corps um, after 10 years for PTSD. Daniel Brazell helped start Team Fidelis. It's an organization dedicated to preventing suicide among service members. For me, the biggest thing that helped me was helping other veterans. Through outreach events, Team Fidelis helps veterans find a sense of belonging. We need to get veterans back engaged in the community. They need to get out. We need to get them out of isolation. We need to get them connected to each other and kind of being able to heal each other. Rudolph now works as a veteran navigator for Team Fidelis, helping fellow vets learn about the resources available to them. And it's just getting out there, letting them know that they're not, they're not alone. Trying to send a message of hope that healing is possible. You can't leave it bottled up. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. You cannot leave it bottled up. And it took me years upon years to learn that. And the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs says out of every 100 veterans that served in the Vietnam War, 15 were diagnosed with PTSD. And it's estimated that about 30 out of every 100 Vietnam vets have had PTSD in their lifetime. So you might be curious, how can you help a veteran going through PTSD? We're taking a deeper dive into this topic tonight. First is listen. Someone who was in a war may want to talk about it or what they experience, but avoid giving advice or opinions on unless they ask. Next is to help the veterans build a support system, encourage them to maintain other relationships and confide in more than one individual. Also, stability is important for our veterans. Be sure to create a sense of safety and be a consistent and steady presence in their life. Lastly, encourage them to enroll in specialized treatment for PTSD. Different programs can offer education, evaluation and more treatment options. And tonight, local disabled veterans are testing out the waters in a veterans empowered through scuba project downtown, all in hopes of helping veterans overcome effects related to PTSD. 23 ABC's Kylie Walker joins us at a local physical therapy facility in South uh, Southwest Bakersfield with all those details. Kylie. Hey Keely, yeah, that class just started just a moment ago. Everyone's walking in, so we're going to be heading in there in just a moment. But first, I want to introduce you guys to Martha Shimon. Martha, thank you for having us Absolutely. tonight. Could you just tell me about your facility, what you provide, and what's going on here tonight? Well, um, we teach disabled veterans, military veterans, how to dive at no cost through our Vets Project, Veterans Empowered Through Scuba. And right now, we are training our fifth group. So excited to say that. And they're also training to be advanced divers. So by the time they're done, they will have their certifications in open water and in advanced certification. And could you tell me, I know that this helps with some people who are, you know, suffering with PTSD. How does it, something like this activity help them cope? Well, studies do show that there are therapeutic benefits to scuba. And uh, we hope that we can improve upon their mental health um, so that they can live happier and healthier lives. 
And then you were also telling me that this is a good way for people to really transition from going from, you know, military life just to everyday life. Could you kind of speak on that? Yeah, what, what I'm hearing from the veterans is that, uh, you know, when they're in the military, they have their buddy, battle buddy, they have structure, and they pretty much, their world stops when they leave and the world goes on. And so when they come back, it's just an awkward place to be. And so providing them a system of support um, to have that, that camaraderie with other uh, fellow military vets that love the same sport is, is what has been helpful for many of them. And can you kind of touch on again, you know, there I know there's a group of about six additional uh, scuba divers yeah. who are now going to be rescue divers. Talk about that. Yeah, so this is the first time that we have a group of uh, students who will be rescue divers. So our former students, military veterans uh, who've been trained by us are now moving on to advanced skills and becoming rescue divers. So it's just a way for them to be stronger um, divers and to be able to rescue themselves and rescue someone else if needed. And so these are the these are the diehards. These are the ones that just have a passion for the sport. So really excited to, to have that happen this year. I just can't wait for these guys, though, to get in the water for the first time and just um, experience this amazing underwater world because every time they get out of the water for the first time, there's always all these amazing reactions. Well, that's awesome. So exciting for them in there as well as those new divers. And we're going to have more of this for you guys coming up tonight at 11. We're even going to speak to a couple of these veterans ourselves. Back to you, Keith.